Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bethany and I'm hosting a series on the poisonous plants and fungi that you may have in your backyard. Now, I do do my makeup at the same time. I'm not a makeup artist. I'm also not a herbologist. I just find this particular topic very interesting to myself. So if it is something that does interest you as well, I do put out new videos every Tuesday. So hit that subscribe button and follow along with me every week. So today's special plant is Aconitum napellus, which is more commonly known as either aconite or monk's hood. Now there are several other names that it does go by. These can include uh, wolfsbane, queen of poisons, or devil's helmet. So what does Aconitum napellus look like? Now it is a plant that actually has over 100 uh, species within its genus. So there's quite a, a broad range, but for today's video, we're actually focusing on um, monk's hood itself. So it is a perennial plant, which as we know, means that it lives for more than two years. And it actually consists of one main stem, basically that all the, the leaves and the flowers actually grow from. Now the leaves are dark green and they're called palmate. Uh, which means palm shaped. So they're, they're, they're a palm shaped leaf and they have between five to seven segments on each particular leaf. So the flowers would then crown the top half of the stem. It's kind of like a spire and they're actually really distinguishable by their shape because they had, um, they, they actually looked like a, a monk's cow, um, hence the name monk's hood. And there was an opening in the bottom for pollination to occur. Now these flowers would range from being blue to pink to white to yellow and even purple as well. So most uh, species of aconitum can be found around Europe and going into Asia. Now the plant itself likes to have cool roots and all of its leaves like facing towards the sun. So if you're wanting to actually plant this in your own garden, um, it, do, it does prefer to have like moist, constantly moist roots, but it needs good grain, uh, good drainage, good drainage um, to ensure that root rot doesn't set in. So why is it on the poisons list? Well, aconitum has a toxin inside most species of the plant called aconitin, which is, you know, super original. So aconitin is a neurotoxin and a cardiotoxin, which means that it attacks both the nervous and cardiovascular systems. So it's kind of like a double whammy. So the initial symptoms of a poisoning of aconitin is nausea, you can have vomiting, you can have diarrhea, you can have burning of the abdomen, and you can also have a burning, tingling and, and numbing sensation of both the mouth and face. Now severe poisonings can actually have that numbing and tingling sensation extend through to the limbs and th that can actually uh, cause motor weakness to occur. So you find motor skills, uh, it just kind of goes out the window. So the cardiovascular symptoms that you can experience uh, include hypertension, which is low blood pressure, you can also experience ventricular arrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat. And then on top of that, you can also experience sinus brachycardia, which is a decreased heart rate. So these can then cause further symptoms to occur, uh, which can include dizziness, sweating, uh, difficulty breathing, headache, convulsions, confusion, um, and if medical assistance is not received, um, then you can also experience death. Now by medical assistance, I actually mean a hospital stay. There is no antidote currently, at least as of the timing of this video, for aconitin poisoning. So it's all about managing symptoms and um, being reactive at the same time. So get yourself to a hospital because if you can't keep anything if you if you experience diarrhea and vomiting and nothing is being kept in your system they can hook you up to some fluids if you die if your heart stops they have defibrillators they have people there that have CPR so go to a hospital it's actually in your best interest to do that now all the life-threatening effects of aconitum aside uh, it has actually been used within traditional medicine uh, for quite some time as well 
So aconitum has actually been used for a long time in traditional Chinese medicine and it was believed to save a person's yang, so like their yin and their yang, um, because obviously everything lives in harmony. Now it would be uh, toasted, fried, boiled, um, steamed, it went through a detoxification process so it could actually then be used um, without causing a fatality. So the detoxified plant would be used as a stimulant um, to treat the liver and the spleen. Um, it would also be used uh, for treatment of malaise, which is kind of like general discomfort. Uh, it was also used for the treatment within uh, patients for cancer, for heart disease, as well as poor circulation, vomiting, diarrhea, cold uterus was another one. Um, because all of these symptoms were believed to have been caused by a person's yang dying. So by saving a person's yang, they would be saving their, um, like the, their harmony, they'd be cured of all of these particular illnesses. Now, the Chinese weren't the only ones that actually had like a um, mythic components to aconitum. So the ancient Greeks actually believed that it came from Cerberus's spit when Heracles brought him up from the underworld. They also associated the plant with the goddess Hecate uh, as she was the goddess of the knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants, which is kind of fitting. Now she was also the goddess of gatekeeping as well as witchcraft, crossroads, shape-shifting, necromancy. Like she, she sounds sick to me, like she sounds absolutely awesome. Now aconite and poisoning is also found in their literature. So it's mentioned in some poems like Metamorphosis 7 where Scythian sorceress Medea uh, actually tries to poison Theseus. Um, it's also found in Metamorphosis 6 where Athena sprinkles um, aconite powder over Arachne and she turns into a spider, hence like arachnophobia and <laughs> arachnids. <laughs> now aconitin is also found in Indian mythology and it's considered actually sacred to the god Shiva. So according to legend, the essence of all poisons, which was called Hala Hala, um, came from the swirling motion of the ocean's milk, um, which was called, and I know I'm probably going to get this wrong, I'm just going to check my notes, Sam Samudra Mathana, Samudra Mathana, um, when it produced the holy cow. Now, if I've said that wrong, please correct me, because I don't want to cause uh, any offence or anything like that. Um, but it produced the holy cow. Now, the other gods were actually frightened, so what they did is they ran to Shiva, um, and Shiva basically picked up, scooped up all the poisons um, and drank them. The, the only, he only missed one drop, it fell from his hand, and that's actually where all poisonous plants, aconitum included, have actually sprung from, otherwise the world would be a very toxic place to live. So I, I found this um, legend actually really, really interesting. It's also apparently, um, at least according to the version that I was reading, uh, why he's blue, um, because drinking all those poisons caused him to turn blue. So I found that one actually really quite interesting. I hadn't heard that one before, so that one was new. Now there have been more modern uses of aconitum in history. So the Monaro in Ladakh, which is in um, Kashmir, actually use it to coat their arrows because they hunt ibis. Now it's also been used by the Ainu, uh, Ainu, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, the Ainu in Japan um, because they, they used it because they would hunt bears. Um, and it was also used by the Alouettes of Alaska as they would use it to hunt whales. Now, aconitum was coated on their arrows or spears, and it was generally done by two different ways. So the first one would be to juice the roots, and then the second option that they had to uh, coat their weapons was actually by drying the root. They would then um, like 
grind it or, or like grate it um, and then add some water to it and then let it ferment they warm it and let it ferment um, and then that concoction was actually what they would then use as well to coat their their arrows and spears and then go hunting now aconitum napellus was also used in poisonings and executions throughout history as well so it was probably the most famous hypothesis that i found um, was that it was used in the execution of Socrates, the philosopher. Um, but there is conjecture about that because it, it's kind of split on it was either aconitin that was used or it was hemlock that was used um, for his particular ex execution. Either way, he was killed and it was through uh, poison. Um, but other, other figures throughout history that have actually been poisoned by Aconitin include the Roman Emperor Claudius um, and it's also believed that Alexander the Great um, was poisoned and that was how he died as well. So Aconitum has a long history of mythological uses. Um, like some of that also included like providing protection from vampires, um, it was believed to ward off werewolves, it was believed to cure lycanthropy, lycanthropy to cure being a werewolf. Um, <laughs> but there was actually, speaking of that, there was actually a Germanic, an infamous Germanic tribe called the Berserkers, and they would actually eat aconitum. They would eat aconitum to turn into a werewolf. So I suppose depending on where you are in the world, it has different mythological uses uh, that it seems to be able to be used for. But aconitum is actually still prevalent like in today's mythology as well. Like any any TV show that you watch um, that has a werewolf in it generally has some kind of connection where monk's hood or aconite is mentioned. Same goes with like popular pop culture. Um, so like take Harry Potter as an example. In Snape's very first potions lesson, one of the questions that is asked is what's the difference between monk's hood and wolfsbane? It's also found in like books and, and comic books as well. In X-Men, there's a character called Rain Sinclair whose X-Men name is Wolfsbane because she has the ability to transform into a wolf um, or a transitional stage between the two. So it is very prevalent still in today's society. Unfortunately, Aconite also has had some additional myths thrust onto it as well in more recent times. So with the, the current pandemic that's going at the moment, the president of Kyrgyzstan, Sadir Japarov, actually made claims with no proof whatsoever, like none, that um, consuming aconite root would actually be a beneficial treatment for the virus that we are all currently experiencing at the moment, which again, he had no proof, nothing to actually back up those claims, but unfortunately it ended up putting four people in the hospital. Again, obligatory um, statement on every video, please do not actually consume any of any parts of the plants and fungi that do get discussed. Um, just don't, they are poisonous, there is a reason that they should not be consumed. The World Health Organization actually had to come out and state that there is no evidence at all that aconitum uh, or any of the species is able to assist in any illnesses, let alone the ones that we're currently facing at the moment, the different strains that we're currently facing at the moment. So please do not actually consume any parts of this plant. Um, it's not not actually good for your health. If you want to grow it in your garden, by all means, go ahead. It's been cultivated safely for hundreds of years. It's an absolutely gorgeous plant. It's one that I actually would like to have in my own garden one day. Um, just, you know, keep it away from children and curious pets. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, guys, and I hope you liked the video. I really enjoyed creating this one. The history and the research that I found about how vast this plant is and the different types of uses as well as like how far it has actually reached has been really, really interesting to, to read and, and to research on. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you have a particular plant in mind that you'd like for me to do some research and do a video on, I'd be more than happy to, to get some suggestions. Otherwise, stay safe, guys, and I will see you in the next one.
Bye.